next question is, what is the mark of the beast? All right. The mark of the beast is identified as Sunday observance, but not currently. The mark of the beast will exist after a law is passed, officially making Sunday the day of worship on a universal basis, I mean on a global basis. When that occurs, and people have to make choices now between a clear man-made law and God's law, those who choose against God will then have the mark of the beast. So no one has it now, but the mark of the beast is that action which more than any other, establishes the power of the Roman church. And this statement is found in their writings. They have the power to change what God has written. They have the power to enact laws and to change laws. And so the mark of the beast, and God has a mark too, which is the seven-day Sabbath, or a sign or a token. Each power has a mark, which is the way it always is. The mark of the beast is the acceptance of man-made laws above the law of God. That's the mark of the beast. And since that law has not yet been passed, no one yet has that mark. But faithful members, even now, have the seal, which is faithfulness to God expressed through obedience to his commandments, including the fourth, because the fourth commandment is a sign between God and his people. So no one has the mark of the beast now, but many have the seal of God. So the mark, again, the mark of the beast, powerful. observance, but no one has it yet. It will only be placed on people by their choice when they willingly choose a man-made day above God's Sabbath on the basis of a man-made law. That's when people will have the mark of the beast. Amen. So we, you see, Thank you Revelation so gives us two powers, Christ and Satan. Revelation gives us two cities, Jerusalem and Babylon. Revelation gives us uh, two, two objects of worship, Satan, God. It's a choice, one or the other. Of course, we know sheep and goats, wheat and tares, we know that. But Revelation, you either worship Christ, the creator, or you worship the devil through human agents. See, when someone gives an offering to an idol, it's really given to the devil because the idol is stone. Stone doesn't know anything. And so... The object of worship that does not conform with God's system is sin. Let me say that differently. When someone worships contrary to God's prescription, which is his law, that worship is given to Satan, even though the people may say it's being given to God. If you read Exodus 32, the chapter where they worship the golden calf, Aaron said in verse 6, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. That's what Aaron said. The day was dedicated to God, but they were worshiping the devil. That's why God wanted to kill all of them, and Moses had to intercede. Let me say it again. When Aaron and the others made that calf, Aaron made proclamation saying, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. I believe that Exodus 32, verse 6. The fact it was proclaimed as a day of God did not make it acceptable to God. Because law-breaking can never please God. The fact that someone says, I keep Sunday to honor God, does not mean God accepts it. It is no different. It must, be, it must conform with the law of God. And God's law told the Israelites, do not make images, do not bow them to them. God's law tells us the seventh day is the Sabbath, not the first, the seventh day. And to keep Sunday and say it is for God, your intentions may be right, but your action is wrong. And God in his mercy sends light, such as this program, to open people's eyes, to teach them that good intentions are not enough. We must worship God in accordance with his law, his prescription, and that is condensed in the Ten Commandments. And that is done through the power of Jesus Christ, of course.